Hey y'all, we're going to be talking mutations today. A mutation means that we've altered the sequence of DNA. And when we do that, what's going to happen a lot of times is that we're going to mess up the protein that we're making eventually. So let's go ahead and talk about the different types of gene mutations or mutations in our genes, which are just segments of DNA. Um, there's going to be some overlap in our vocabulary, you're going to notice. So I'm going to try to be as clear as possible. Just know that some terms we're going to see them kind of overlap in what they can describe. So our very first type of gene mutation is what we call a point mutation. This just means that we're only affecting one or very few nucleotides in a gene sequence. So take a look at our picture here. It looks like we are doing what we call a substitution, which means that that C right there got substituted to the letter A or to an adenine. That's not good when that happens because then it's going to go get transcribed into RNA and translated into a protein. And look what happened as a result. We've messed up our amino acid. It was supposed to be glutamate and now it's aspartate. So that, it depends on how many of these errors we have as to whether or not it's going to screw up the entire protein. Sometimes that's the case. So let's take a look. There's three different types of point mutations that we're going to look at. Um, this is what we just saw. This is called a substitution where we sub out one nucleotide for another. Sometimes we change to a different amino acid and then sometimes we get lucky and it stays the same. That can happen too. We'll see that here in a little bit. But that's our first type of point mutation is a substitution. Our second type is what we call an insertion. And what's nice about these ones is that they are exactly what it describes. We insert a a DNA nucleotide into the sequence and look what happens. We originally just had one thymine right here and whoops we've inserted a second thymine. So what that's done is remember our, our RNA is read in, in groups of three, our codons, and that's really messing up like the reading frame of the codons. So now instead of our um, codon being GAG like it was supposed to be over here, now it's GAA. But if you look next door, our next codon was supposed to be UCC and now it's GUC. So everything from that point forward has gotten messed up. That is what we also can call a frame shift mutation. And these are not good because what's going to happen is every amino acid from that point forward is probably going to be messed up. So we were lucky this one, look, it's, it stayed the same, it's still glutamate, but the next two, it was supposed to be serine and then aspartic acid, and now it's valine and arginine, it's not even the same. So we've really messed up the protein in this case, it's probably not going to work right. And that can lead to things like genetic disorders or things um, that can make people sick. Here's our third type of point mutation. It is called a deletion. It is the exact opposite of the one we just saw. Instead of inserting a nucleotide or just a few nucleotides, we're deleting a nucleotide. So it looks like we were supposed to have these two Gs next to each other, and it looks like we got rid of one, and now we just have the one G. And um, it looks like, yay, we kept that first amino acid the same. It's still a serine. But the next one was supposed to be aspartate, and now it's isoleucine. So we've, we've messed up all the ones downstream stream of that point. So these are all examples of point mutations because we were only affecting one or very few nucleotides. Now we saw that two of those, uh, insertion and deletion, were also examples of a frame shift mutation. And that means that we have shifted our reading frame because codons, RNA codons, are read in groups of three. And so if we start to insert or delete nucleotides, then that codon reading frame gets thrown off. And that results in what we call a frame shift. Now every now and again, guys, we can get a little bit lucky. And let's say we're doing a deletion or a deletion happens, if we delete in multiples of three, that's actually kind of good because then we take out that entire amino acid and then hopefully all the other ones are still the same. We're just now like missing an amino acid as opposed to every amino acid from that point forward being messed up. So that's kind of like the best case scenario when that happens. Um, so insertions and deletions in multiples of three um, can actually like be okay in some cases, but um, it can still result in a messed up protein, which is not good. All right, so other ways we can classify a gene mutation. So in addition to all that that we just saw, these are also ways that we can talk about gene mutations. And the first one is when we get lucky because it is called a silent mutation because nothing happened to the overall phenotype or the overall protein. And so take a look. We're, we're looking at DNA here. Uh, looks like we've mutated the T to a C. And because we've altered the RNA as well, um, luckily... 
we didn't change our amino acid. Our amino acid is still tyrosine. So that's what we call a silent mutation, meaning that there was a DNA mutation, but it did not result in a change in the amino acid. So kind of like no harm, no foul. This next one is called a missense mutation, and a missense mutation occurs whenever we make a single mistake, is kind of how I think of it. Um, so take a look at what is going on. We've got repeating DNA, uh, cat, 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 hey, that's fun. And then um, ultimately that's going to code for the amino acid histidine. And so we've just got like a bunch of histidines linked together. Now if we change, it looks like the A to a C, whoopsies, we have messed up and instead of a histidine, we now have a a proline. That's the wrong amino acid. That's what we call a missense, and so um, that's whenever we make just one single mistake in terms of an amino acid. So this was a, and listen to how many different ways we can classify this. So this was a point mutation because we only messed up the letter A here. It was a substitution because that's what we did. We substituted A for a C and it resulted in a missense mutation. So that's what I mean about like there's a lot of overlapping definitions just because one is one thing doesn't mean it can't be like another thing. All right, here's our last one, and this one um, is always kind of easier for students to remember. This one's called a nonsense mutation, and this happens whenever we've made a DNA mutation that results ultimately in a premature stop codon. So notice in this one, we were supposed to have a bunch more glutamines down uh, the line here, and whenever we changed that C to a T, whoops, that is ultimately going to code for a stop codon, and now we're not going to have any of those amino acids from that point forward. That protein's probably going to be messed up and it's probably not going to work right. That again can result in things like genetic disorders, um, you know, people not being as healthy. That's what can happen with these mutations. All right, so now we're going to shift gears, guys, and we're going to go to what we call a chromosomal mutation. Now, we haven't really talked about chromosomes in here. Normally, by this point, we would have talked about chromosomes, but because of weird COVID school year, we shifted stuff around, and now we're doing that second semester. So, um, basic chromosome knowledge, you guys, each one of those chromosomes is a bunch of DNA. That's what your chromosomes are. It's a bunch of DNA. So when we start to alter entire chromosomes, now we're messing with a lot of DNA. And so this particular type of mutation, these often lead to even greater negative effects on people or other uh, plants, animals, organisms, because we're impacting a lot of the DNA. So this first one's called a duplication. And take a look, this segment right here of our chromosome, whoops, it got duplicated. We don't have to worry about how it got duplicated, but whenever we have two copies of each gene like this, basically your body's going to go, should I read from the first B segment or the second B segment? Wh which one? And so because of that confusion, this can result in, again, proteins maybe not getting made the way that they should be. Um, it can result in certain dis uh, genetic disorders. So that's a duplication. Deletion just means that we are um, missing part of our chromosome here. And so this is also not good because what if there's important information in that segment that's supposed to code for proteins that keep you safe and healthy. Um, and so, yeah, now that's not there anymore. So none of those proteins are going to get made. So that's a deletion. An inversion happens when some of the genes in the chromosome literally just do a 180. They're just going to flip around. So notice the original order here, guys. It just went in the order of the alphabet, A through F. And now look what happened. We took that whole middle section, B through E, and it flipped around. And so this one actually doesn't cause that big um, of an effect a lot of times because all the DNA is still there. It's just kind of in like a different order. And as long as the genes themselves didn't get like separated in this, um, if all the genes are still there, then hopefully um, this will result in mostly functional proteins being made. And here's our last one, guys. It is called a translocation. This is our last slide too. A translocation means that DNA from one chromosome has basically detached and gone over to another chromosome. Don't worry about that word non-homologous. We haven't talked about that one yet. Um, but this is, whenever this happens, um, a lot of times it's not good. This is how some cancers form, actually, or how they get started, rather, is that one section of a chromosome jumps over to another chromosome, and then in some cases they can actually switch information. Um, anyway, that can often trigger, like, the beginning of certain cancers um, that can occur. So that one, to me, I think is kind of the worst one. Um, a deletion would also be not good. All right, guys, that's it. Yay, I kept this under 10 minutes. Just barely. Thanks for hanging with me.